mobile network operators constantly need to adapt to market demand, involving content, services and delivery channels, particularly in the light of OTT competition. I'm talking to Morgan Kamich, the author of our latest research on mobile network operator business models. Welcome, Morgan. First of all, maybe you could uh, overview the report and what does it contain? Sure. So the report is a very strategic assessment of the current and, and near future space uh, as far as mobile network operators are concerned. So we're looking at different things, for example, the threats and challenges that operators are currently facing and will be facing in the next five years, as well as um, the new revenue opportunities that operators should really seize to survive in this very competitive market. In addition to these analysis, we're also looking at an innovation index of 20 five world leading players um, and what solutions they offer to remain competitive in the market. And finally, we also have a five-year benchmark forecast looking at different elements such as data usage, but also quantifying these additional new revenue opportunities uh, for each key region and key countries. Okay. So how would you summarise the state of the market at present? Sure, so the market is very much in a state of transition at the moment. Uh, it has been deeply impacted by lots of changing in society, for example, in the way we communicate with each other, in the way we use technology, or even in the way we entertain each other. And um, that has very much forced operators to redefine their solutions and to find new monetization opportunities. This is also brought upon by the rise of a very app-centric environment, where everything is being done on an app or through an app and the rise of OTT players, so what we call over-the-top players. And they are um, very much a big competition for um, mobile network operators insofar as they take market share away from operators while still um, increasing traffic uh, on operators' networks. So the challenge is very twofold in this case. It's about generating new revenue on one side, but also understanding uh, new requirements and new customer behaviour on the other. Okay. So what would you say are the key takeaways from the research? One of the most interesting data points in, in the research is this tremendous increase in traffic, where we forecast that there will be a 29% increase in cellular data traffic uh, over the next five years. This is very much pushed by the rise of uh, video streaming websites such as Netflix and Ulu, which we believe will account for over 55% of data usage by 2024. So this is definitely uh, an element to be reckoned with over the next five years. Okay, so it's a very big topic, obviously. Um, could you pick out one area that you felt was particularly important or interesting to you? Sure, so the report is very much about going beyond just stating that um, revenues are declining to really identify what could operators do about this. And we've then considered several avenues such as A2P messaging, carrier billing, M2M connectivity and, and lots of other different segments. And what's interesting is that we believe that the fastest growing segment will be mobile identity services, which we believe will account for over half of all additional revenues by 2024. This is very much pushed by several initiatives such as the GSMA's Mobile Connect, which uh, offers lots of uh, operators the chance to build on their own solutions from this, but also by different countries. So for example, in China, the pressure from OTT is huge and several OTT, for example, WeChat, which is owned by Tencent, have already developed um, mobile identity so, uh, solutions. So it's very much forcing them to up their games. Okay. Um, in the report, there's the uh, Innovation and Agility Index. Maybe you could talk us through that a little bit. Who do you include and uh, what are the conclusions? Sure. So the um, index includes 25 world leading players uh, in all over the world and it looks at um, the levels of agility and innovation for each of these players. Um, all results roughly fall into three categories, the leaders, challengers and the aspiring players. We found that leading players, for example, Vodafone, AT&T, Verizon, Telefonica or Telenor, have very much um, consolidated their IoT solutions. They've either partially or completely virtualized part of their networks, which is allowing them to save on operational costs, for example. And they also have started to venture into these revenue opportunities that we mentioned earlier, um, such as mobile identity services. So it's very much a key of um, being agile and constantly innovating 
to uh, remain ahead of the game. Okay. And do you offer strategic recommendations for the main players? Absolutely. We offer recommendations, different spaces. For example, in the consumer space, we believe that operators should very much look into developing their own original entertainment content um, to stay on par with, for example, Netflix and Hulu but also keep monetizing their IoT data or further push for VR and AR technology. Um, as far as the enterprise and the public spaces are concerned, it's all about 5G and maximizing the impact of 5G. Okay, I mean, 5G is the issue at the moment for operators, as, as obviously you know. Um, so what's the status, September 2019, of 5G deployment? Yeah, so 5G is the hottest topic at the moment. Um, it has already been deployed all over the US, in the UK, and in some Asian markets, such as China and South Korea. And we forecast that there will be 1.5 billion active 5G connections over the next five, year, five years, uh, reaching about 19% of the global population. So it, it will be huge over the next five years still. Um, as I said, What's the most interesting about 5G is not necessarily faster speed and uh, better entertainment experiences, but it's also the new technologies that it, it enables. For example, edge computing is very big at the moment. It allows um, content to be processed at the edge of the network, and that in turn allows for lower latency and a higher bandwidth, which is essential for self-driving cars or VR gaming experiences, for example. Thank you, Margaret. Very interesting. If you'd like to learn more about this, sub, uh, this subject, then please get in touch or visit our website. Thank you.